This is exactly right. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello and welcome to my favorite murder. The Minions so Minions The Minions so This is a that's brought to you by the Minions. God, they're funny. They're little. Um, sometimes they have two eyes. Sometimes they have, they have one eye. The way they talk is adorable. It's babble, but you also understand what they're trying to say. This isn't. This episode isn't brought to you by Minions. If so, we'd be millionaires right now. <laughs> but I really did like that. Like surprise the shit out of myself by like just being really bored one time and turning that on and being like delighted by it. Oh, the Despicable Me franchise is yeah. rock solid in terms of comedy. <laughs> I've watched all of those movies with my niece. Yeah. The first one, we loved it so much. We watched it all the time. It's so cute. It's so funny and so cute. Charming. Um, but that's not what this is about. This is about the minions. Now we're going <laughs> to not get charming and cute and read you your fucked up stories that you send us. Do you understand that life is about contrast and that when you have the charming and cute, you come mm-hmm. under it hard yeah. with the horrifying. You just rip it open. Yes. Are you ready for the first one? Give it to me. <laughs> the subject line of this is we saved a life. Hello, everyone, with both human and animal. Um, I love you guys so much, but let's get right to this. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, this isn't so much a hometown story, but a story with girls from my hometown. Mm. When I was 14, I played on a traveling softball team. That just, you know, my niece Nora's on a traveling I know. softball team. Yes, yeah, Steel Breeze, you know. <laughs> Okay, we were based out of Pittsburgh, but we were in Wheeling, West Virginia for the weekend of a tournament. After all our games were over for the day, myself and three of my teammates were hanging out back at our hotel in one of our family's rooms. Some of our parents went to the local casino. I bet they fucking did. Hell yeah, they did. They're like, great job today, everybody. Get away from us. Uh, And others were hanging out by the pool. But for the most part, the four of us were unsupervised. So what could four unsupervised teenage girls Mm. do with their time, you ask? You guessed it. Sneak away from our hotel to smoke some weed. Our hotel sat on a tiny country road all by itself, other than a few random houses down the street. We snuck off to a little spot down the road, tucked back into a little into the woods. All ready to get, quote unquote, high as fuck, we realized we forgot a lighter to hit our tinfoil bowl. Oh, God. We made, oh, parentheses, yes, I know, I probably have cancer now. (laughs) No, no, it's Alzheimer's. Um, So we walked back to get one, and then we returned to our secluded little spot. We smoked, we got all giggly, and we decided to walk back to our hotel. On our walk back, we saw a van coming from behind us from down the country road toward us and our hotel going towards the highway. Mm -hmm. As the van drove, creepily slow by us, we all noticed the woman driving really stared us down. And then as she continued by, it seemed like in slow motion, she looked into the back seats and we saw a little girl sitting back there. We all agreed it was weird, but we thought we were just being paranoid because we were high. Very, very likely. Mm -hmm. We got back to our hotel, safe and sound, and we just did high stuff high teenagers do, Mm -hmm. eat snacks and giggle. Here's where the shit gets real. Mm. We were hanging out, just goofing off when... um, out of nowhere one of my friends just walks over and turns on the radio uh not saying a word while she does it <gasps> a song was playing and then it was in, a me- in no. immediately interrupted by an amber alert no we didn't pay much attention to it but then all caught that they were talking about our area Fuck. then it described a van and a woman driving it and the little girl she kidnapped oh my god we all froze and just looked at each other they described the van and the woman just as we saw it in somewhat disbelief we went and found my friend's mom trying to keep cool and yeah. giggles to a minimum. Oh, I forgot no. that part. They're the all giggles. <laughs> I didn't forget that part because I was like, I bet they're not going to call the cops because they're high they're as so shit. Down there, like, oh, it's not really happening. That's why okay. I don't like getting high. It's like, what if you have to take care of something? No, I mean, I think that's why it's funny when you're 14 or what, yeah. you know, when you're younger. Yeah. But yeah, you have so much to take care yeah. of well, as there's you get an older. Earthquake, like a fucking crazy earthquake and you have to like get your pets and take the in like get outside you know yeah but you're like wait i'm gonna stop and eat a snickers first <laughs> okay hold on 
uh, 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 okay, so they go find okay. your friend's mom, and they told her what we saw on our quote-unquote walk uh-huh. and about the Amber Alert. She said we were probably being paranoid, but she called the police just to be safe and told them uh, where we were and what we saw. We left it at that, and we went on our evening. Then, Uh-oh. about an hour later, we got a call back from the police. They found the little girl and arrested the woman at the gas station right down the street from our <gasps> hotel. They, um, they had found and saved the little girl based on our call. Oh. Holy shit. Because it was the woman we saw. Pot saves the day. Yeah. <laughs> Smoke pot, everyone. Legalize it. Um, <laughs> this was over 15 years ago and is still a moment I will never forget. Yeah. I will never fucking forget no, it. No, that's I'm amazing. I'm just reading it fourth hand. Hope you enjoyed this freaky story with my hometown friends, SSDGM Kel. Dude, that's I mean, a story. That that's, is a fucking great story. That is move her to the front story. Top notch. I don't even so want to read good. mine now. Oh, that's great. Uh, but also under the <laughs> did this really happen or are you just stoned are you just <laughs> yeah. or are you are you high from the uh aluminum foil you oh, just God. smoked into your brain yeah <laughs> are you just really insane <laughs> um okay so good thanks this one's called good job my dad nearly had me kidnapped uh-oh hi all So, it was 1996. My dad was looking to sell his car. A man interested in purchasing said car comes over to take a look. My dad's out front giving the man a tour of the car. A tour of the car. Uh, Toddler Ellie running around while he is doing so. After a while, my dad comes back into the house and mom asks how he got on. Oh, they must be Brits. All good. He has just taken out taking it out for a test drive dad replies my mom then asks if it was a good idea to let him letting him take the car up by himself fair question because who in their right mind lets a stranger take their car for a drive unsupervised <laughs> yeah don't panic folks my dad had it covered and he replied to my mom and said no it's all right ellie's in the back <laughs> Wait, how old is she? She said she's a toddler running around. <laughs> what? Toddler Ellie running around. <laughs> I can only imagine what followed was a lot of hysteria and foul language being thrown at my dad from my very frazzled mother. I, I came back, though, so it's cool. And that is a true and mildly, not so mildly alarming story of my near kidnapping experience and my dad's wonderful parenting skills. Can we just take a second to imagine the poor man being trusted to take the car out with a, alone with a random child in the back that aside it's so crazy if i was that mother i would have slapped him forward and back if i was the person taking the car for a test drive i'd be like i don't trust you and leave right i mean because was she in a toddler seat or was she just like sitting around in the back seat who fucking knows (gasps) it sounds like she was just wandering around it does sound like she was just in the car yeah get in take the car for a test drive with this nice man hold this beer (laughs) That aside, and believe it or not, my dad was actually a truly amazing man and an incredible father. (laughs) Uh Unfortunately, I only got a short 19 years with him as he passed away in 2013. Uh. I miss him dearly and have many, many more stories of this wonderful, crazy man who was at times clearly way too trusting. And for that, I am blessed. Thank you guys for everything you do. Weird to think that listening to two funny chicks talk about murder is a sort of escapism for my severe anxiety. But hey, whatever floats your boat, right? (laughs) I'm clearly not alone. Stay sexy and don't send your daughter off in a car with strangers ellie ellie you're not alone also i wonder if some of her anxiety is based yeah. in a very deep seated early mistrust of your parents <laughs> skills who is minding the shop to be like i just don't feel safe in life well he's not going to steal the car because he has our child right <laughs> right oh my god um well we'll keep going on the car theme okay this is the subject line is things found hidden in cars. Okay. Hello, Karen, George, Stephen, and uh, all furry friends of the MFM team. Cool. <clears throat> I work as a technician for a German luxury car manufacturer. Well, can we get a sample of one of those, please? <laughs> yeah, we need to sample that. <laughs> uh, I know you guys have been asking for stories about stuff found in walls, but I thought mm. you might be interested in some strange things I've found yes. in cars while working on them. Yes. Yes, we are. My first story is from when I had started in the industry. A client came in asking for her car to be searched for a trip tracking device as her abusive (gasps) ex-husband had confronted her at a grocery store when he had a restraining order when she had a restraining order against (gasps) him and had uh, changed her number and address i searched the car in all the obvious places thinking that the guy didn't have the have access to the car he did and eventually (sighs) found the device in the spare tire compartment that's where it always is right no i don't know i don't know uh apparently the guy had a key to the car and the lady didn't want to pay for new keys and locks to the car anyways the younger me was excited to 
to have actually found it and happily showed the client the device and I'll never forget her horrified reaction. Of course. Oh my God. It's so creepy. A detective came to get my statement and me being into true crime, I found it very exciting to be involved. <laughs> a few years later, I was working on a car where I found an unrolled sleeping bag in the back seat and in the trunk, I found a dirty shovel and a woman's single high-heeled shoe. I was creeped what? out. What? <laughs> yeah. What? I was creeped out but hoped that the guy who owned the car had simply been a pegged leg gardener who cross-dressed and slept in his car. No! Oh my <laughs> no. God! I don't... I mean, it would be interesting, but I don't think that's it. No. Another... Who knows, though? Dude. I mean, look, we all get to be who we want to be. Listen. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> in another car, my team leader was doing some electrical diagnoses and had to remove the car seat back panel, which hid the fuses and modules. This isn't a compartment that the client should even be aware about, <gasps> since it's super tricky to open and only accessible from the trunk. Mm -hmm. But in a blank fuse panel compartment, the team lead found a pack of condoms. I can only imagine the what? guy was trying to hide them from his wife. <laughs> that's a that's a long, like a big length to go to to hide that. Yeah, don't you have pockets? <laughs> Just or don't you have person. any fucking like you know what's the word respect for your <laughs> yeah, wife for real i was just doing short term oh, but yeah, you're yeah. right long term it's <laughs> how about you end the relationship you're not happy in right um but it's more fun to take your car apart and hide condoms in it. okay uh, uh <laughs> i can only uh finally the best thing i ever found in a car was a beautifully homemade stained glass portrait of somebody's dick pic <laughs> It was, what? it was lovingly made and incredibly detailed, in oh my <laughs> including God. vans on the dick itself and the bathroom counter that could be seen in the oh background. Oh my God, what an amazing gift to give to someone. It's so funny. I bet the car owner was not expecting anyone to ever yeah. find it. But when you leave weird things in your car, somebody most definitely will. Holy shit. <laughs> but also, it's stained glass. It's not like a painting or it's whatever. It's stained glass. Read it again, the description of it. Finally, the best thing I ever found in a car was a beautifully uh -huh. homemade stained glass portrait of somebody's <laughs> dick pic. So someone sent someone a picture of their penis. Yeah, yeah. As if to say consider me yeah, yeah. in your long and some list hilarious of artist like her best friend probably was like yeah i'm gonna get i'm gonna make you remember this forever and made and her specialty was stained glass and she made yeah. her that's a beautiful gift veins included just yeah. so everyone knows <laughs> technicians will always check the trunk during services to check on the spare tires so anything <gasps> left there can and will be seen by everyone in the shop if it is hilarious or questionable anyways i love the show and all the work you ladies put into it stay sexy and don't leave anything incriminating in your car <laughs> melissa thanks, thanks melissa. melissa i'm trying to think if i have anything in my trunk that i'd be like embarrassed of or that i wouldn't want in there but i can't think of it it's all boring shit just like unused yoga mats that's embarrassing uh mine is like always um packages i do not send like i i will package something up to return it or whatever and put it in the back of my car and just it stay it's there forever with America's number one meal kit, HelloFresh, you'll get easy seasonal recipes and pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door. All you have to do is cook and enjoy. HelloFresh makes cooking delicious meals at home a reality. From step-by-step -step recipes to pre-measured ingredients, you'll have everything you need to get a wow-worthy dinner on the table in about 30 minutes. Say goodbye to endless grocery store trips and takeout. HelloFresh has you covered. There's something for everyone, from family recipes to calorie-smart and vegetarian, and fun menu series like Hall of Fame and, and Kraft Burgers. HelloFresh has more five-star recipes than any other meal kit, so you'll know you're getting something incredible. HelloFresh is flexible, and it fits your lifestyle, easily change your delivery days, food preferences and skip a week whenever you need. Break out of your dinnerette and make deliciousness part of every week with HelloFresh. I love that even though HelloFresh is super easy and they make it really basic and like straightforward, you still feel like you're cooking this like incredible home cooked dinner and that makes me feel good about myself. And that instead of just ordering takeout, I'm actually making something and preparing something at home and that just, it feels good. So for $80 off your first month of HelloFresh, go to HelloFresh.com slash Murder80 and enter Murder80. It's like receiving eight meals for free only at HelloFresh.com slash Murder80, promo code Murder80. Goodbye. All right, this is this is a good one. This is one that I think you're gonna like. Okay. This 
title is Swiss Cheese Fetish Guy from Minnesota 29 hit me up on OkCupid <gasps> 10 years ago. <laughs> this was his opener. What? Really? Yes. This it's is a treat. Magical. Are you ready for this? It's cr- early Christmas. Okay, so this is from the this is from the listener. Her name's Amy. She says, "Hey, sexy ladies." Okay. Uh, <laughs> I just listened to Minnesota 29 where you discuss Swiss Cheese Fetish Guy from Philly. I the di- Swiss Cheese Pervert is his professional name. Swiss Cheese Pervert. <laughs> if anyone doesn't remember episode 29, he would drive around in his car and like if a woman would look over, he would hold what was it? Hold Swiss cheese near his dick. He would hold up a piece of Swiss cheese while he was jerking off. Yeah, naked from the waist down. Right. Uh, This is a car themed episode. It is a car themed episode. And also there's a really good animated um, uh, somebody animated and Stephen Stephen's going to find so we say the name. Yeah. But um, somebody did an animation of us talking about that story for the first time. It's one of my favorite things I've ever seen. And I know that there's a photo of Paul Holes on the wall because Paul Holes told me <laughs> that there's a photo of him in the wall of that. <laughs> That's right. And I didn't know how to respond to that. Yep. To Paul Holes yes. telling me that. Paul, <laughs> I think I just crashed my car. <laughs> because because so they put like a hot for Holes calendar on right, the wall. That's what he was in saying. In the animation. And then some smart Murderino was like I love this clip and then added Paul Holes to make sure he saw it well, so he then told me we didn't have to do it mouth yes that he saw it to your face to my face with his own face yes and it, it was horrifying what what did you do well I was <laughs> her cheeks are red right now by the way <laughs> I'm hot Georgia <laughs> He's a powerful man. It's scary. I don't know. I just don't know. I don't know how to talk about this. I'm blushing so fucking hard right also, now. Also, right now, we're giving, we're kind of giving away a secret. We are giving, and that's why I don't want to talk about it That's more. right. He we was in fully, my car. We hang out with Paul Holes, ha- you guys. He was in my car, which was scary enough because I'm driving with a cop. Yes. And you know how I fucking drive. Yes. <laughs> and then he told me that, and I was just like, I should just crash the car right now. You're like, Paul, I have to pull over for a second, <laughs> if you don't mind. Steven, oh, oh. Steven will you give us? Okay. Oh, yeah, Nick Terry. Is and where the name. can you find it? Um, if you just um, if you just if, go to YouTube, if you just Google YouTube. Swiss cheese pervert, I just did Swiss cheese pervert, my favorite murder. <laughs> and Nick Terry's video is like Nick we'll Terry. put it up on our we'll put it on Twitter. Link. It's a real yeah. fast one. It's really fun. Okay. So anyway, here we are. Oh my god. Da, 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 da. He's from Philly. I damn near crashed my car when we were talking about it in the minisode. When I realized who you were discussing, he propositioned me online in two thousand and eight. <sighs> I was living in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Is that right? Yes. About mm-hmm. 90 minute drive north of Philly and I had a dating and I had a dating profile on OkCupid. I received the following message out of the blue with the subject line, can we discuss this? From the guy who a couple years later made national headlines for flashing his junk <laughs> wrapped in a wad of cheese to an underage girl. At the time, I couldn't decide if it was a joke or if I should just admire this guy for just laying it all out there and trying to get his needs met. Turns out he was just a creeper hitting on any female human within the, at least a 90 mile radius who was so disrespectful of anybody's boundaries that he was kicked uh, out of fet life. What's that? I guess it's a fetish life. Web- a fetish life. Fet life. <laughs> I was thinking met life. I'm oh. like, what? <laughs> he, was <never> open- <laughs> <laughs> he was so disrespectful of anybody's boundaries that he was kicked out of fet life. And I, that's hilarious. That's a very extreme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she says, no, I never responded to him. I emailed the message to a friend before shutting down my dating profile. If you ever need a mental break from reading about murder and would rather know way too much about this guy's fetish, here you go. And then she says, enjoy? Question mark, question mark, question mark. <laughs> Amy. Thank you, Amy, for sending this. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Now, listen, I've been hesitant to read this because I, I'm not shaming anyone for their fetish. Everyone is into something different, and we're all fucking humans and just trying to make ourselves and other people happy. That's the point. But That's he is true. a creep who flashed people and didn't ask for consent, and so fuck him and fuck everything. Yeah, I mean, if you're for. getting kicked off fet life, yeah, yeah, yeah. then you're not every. That's just it. Yeah. Is the majority of people have some kind of like this is the thing I like right obviously it's we all have preferences but it's like putting your preference on other people as if they it's their job to make it all happen for you is um what separates normal people from and if part of your perverted part of your preference is that you're doing it to unsuspecting people who haven't consented yes then I can read this online I mean on this podcast right well and that's kind of the key (laughs) to everything is if part of your fetish is the lack of consent right no then that's probably then the answer is no yes okay then the answer to this is are you ready for this <laughs> oh wait we've well, got more no i have his email to her <laughs> oh my god i didn't realize okay. oh she sorry i have his email she Here we sent go. the email to are us i'm gonna do a voice <laughs> <laughs> please do a character voice okay. 
Okay, here's his email. The subject is, can we discuss this? <laughs> and this is how it starts. Oh, no. This is my fetish. <laughs> Full version. <laughs> I love the way Swiss cheese feels against my penis. Oh. Either a slice of Swiss cheese being wrapped around my penis or a chunk of Swiss cheese being rubbed against my penis. You want me to keep going? (laughs) Not in that accent. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, sorry. Can I just pause you really quick? I always thought, and maybe it's because of artwork we've been shown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And remember when the girl dressed up like him for Halloween? She, like, held it above the penis. Yeah, she was just holding it up. Remember when that girl made us a Swiss... Stephen as a Swiss cheese pervert? Yes. With, or was it Elvis as the Swiss cheese? No, it was Stephen. It was Stephen w- with the bald cap on. Right. And it, uh, I still have the little piss, piece... The piss of <laughs> Swiss, um, cheese. Swiss cheese that's like a Christmas ornament. <laughs> it's a beautifully cut piece of felt. I can't remember her name, but sweetheart, thank you. With this, gold... Thre- I mean, that's old. That's this from like a you. year ago. Okay. Want me to Keep going, or should I not even? No, I really want to hear it. Okay, I love even more when a woman uses the Swiss cheese to pleasure me, or simply wraps Swiss cheese slices around my penis and allows me to hang out with her as I wear the cheese. (laughs) (laughs) And and what? Watch like uh, international house hunters hunters or whatever. (laughs) That's better. (laughs) So to give you a basic understanding of my Swiss cheese fetish, the simplest thing is that it's just it's a hand job using Swiss cheese as the tool to pleasure me. But I like to expand upon it by having you wrap Swiss cheese slices around my penis and I wear it for a length of time. Then you repeat the process allowing me to savor your handiwork. Okay, well, I mean, he's explained it seven times. We get there's it's not that... four more paragraphs. Okay, okay, okay. We don't have to do this. I mean, I'm interested in the mindset. Okay. In my younger day, in my younger years, I developed a strong urge for sex, but not being the best looking guy out there, girls tended to ignore me. So I fantasize about sex and masturbate. It's just not the same. One day, I just had some strange feeling and for some unknown reason used cheese to masturbate i started to relate girls to cheese (laughs) girls are attractive soft silky smooth feeling and have milky complexions and holes Uh (laughs) girl (laughs) (laughs) girls hands are also the same way i especially like girls with long thin fingers i feel really dirty reading this (laughs) gross all this was a turn on as for the cheese i tried many different types of cheeses cheddar he goes on to name different kinds of cheeses how do you do that with cheddar though it's so crumbly yeah okay go ahead. even some fancy cheeses and cheese whiz brie however <laughs> none could compare to swiss swiss is a perfect representation of cheese to me if i held up a slice of swiss cheese in front of you that compared to any other style of cheese i am sure you would recognize swiss over the rest no you're right i can't argue you on this one <laughs> My like God, Vince hates Swiss so- cheese. <laughs> also, the way it smells, given it's not that bad, I use domestic and its eye patterns and color. Swiss is very attractive to me. It also shares all the characteristics I see in girls. Uh, it feels smooth and silky. It's semi-soft and flexible, and it smells like perfume to me. Swiss cheese? Uh-huh. Okay. Now, do I like regular sex? Sure. But at the time, <laughs> I would say a good 10 years before I had normal sex, this was the substitute. Now I'm just addicted to it. Like a smoker is addicted to cigarettes. Nope. It's not like that. No, it isn't really like it's that. It's like a drug that I simply can't get enough of. Okay. Everything leading up to a girl, to asking a girl, I have to having it done is the high. And then mm, once I come is the low, but the low... Uh, satisfaction is short-lived. I'm going to stop you really quick just to say, this is an introductory email. This is the first email he sends. Yeah. The first one. This isn't like they're good friends and finally he's like, look, I'm going to level with you. Yeah. It just ends by saying, do you understand and would be willing to help with my addiction? Question mark. The end. I don't know. Should we leave this in? (laughs) Yes, for sure. (laughs) Terrible. Well, no, but here's the thing. Uh, I would just say I, I would like to say this okay. in listening to that and not we're laughing at the fact that this is a this is an Insane. overstep of boundaries beyond belief. Hopefully she got that and then was like, oh, my God. Yeah, uh, I was going to say deleted it, but clearly she didn't. Yeah, but I would say this. Everybody feels like they were ignored by the opposite sex when they were younger. And totally. do you know why they feel that way? Because the per- they always you always like the cheerleader or the quarterback. Yeah, yeah. You don't go, oh, I like the really weird guy in the corner. Yeah. The person who would actually, or like you would have a chance with. My friend who's like super nice to me. Right. It's never that yeah. because everyone's got their, uh, you know, their dreams in the stars right. or whatever. 
when you take that as this factoid yeah. and hold it to your breast, like you've been so damaged and then you go through the rest of life like, oh, well, girls don't like me or yeah. guys don't like me because this it's you're just lying. Yeah. It's like put your shit down and get in the mix. Yeah. I say the, it's the most hypocritical critical thing I've ever said in my life. <laughs> hey, you've been married. But yeah, that's right. I got in. I you got hurt. You it. You know, you can say whatever you want. Um, I mean, it's true. And I've had several wonderful relationships. But I mean, it's like you have to let go of that idea that you you somehow were rejected by all yeah. of one gender. Yeah. It's bullshit. It's like you have to open your eyes to who is interested in you and what you do like. Or and then why are people not interested in you? Are you a fucking dick? Yes. Maybe you're a dick. Maybe you're a dick. And also think if there's tons of unattractive people that are very charismatic yeah. and sexy. Yeah. So don't use that as an excuse because just like don't back yourself into this kind of corner. You know and why people don't like, like you? because you complain that people don't like you all the time or because you're holding up cheese in front of people going this is what women are to me okay well then go to therapy that's not women are not swiss cheese they're not all silky and smooth with holes no like get your your you've oversimplified everything to the point where you can't be in the world yeah come and he on said, yeah it, oh elvis is surprised oh oh uh steven is showing karen the girl who it's, dressed up who, it's what is Bryn it? Bryn her her name is Bryn Bryn on Instagram and it's the fucking greatest Halloween costume of all time. She's the Swiss cheese pervert. She's wearing um, white flesh color, like a white person's flesh colored lycra <laughs> leggings. With a like felt star that she put over her crotch <laughs> over to look like she's like hiding her junk. Yep. A bald cap and a, she has a Swiss a piece of Swiss cheese. Because that's the picture the lady took, yeah, remember? Yeah. No, it's and it's best. like he wasn't wearing, he's wearing a blue t-shirt and wasn't it's wearing pants it's hooray for you Bryn Bryn um do you have another one? Oh, this is very short okay good let's end on like let's end on something okay. else um you know and everybody again will just reiterate fetish up all you want yeah. this was not fetish shaming forensic beach encounter uh oh hi there murderesses I just started listening to your podcast thank you for distracting me from my tedious pot farm job <laughs> Uh, everyone hates their jobs no problem man i know that would be like so many people's dream yeah. job um though not all my co-workers enjoy me yelling murder every time we are choosing something to listen to <laughs> we get it thank you i was at the beach in brookings oregon yesterday drinking a beer in the sand with my sister oh, that sounds awesome mm -hmm. we noticed a strange netted trap like device mm. hanging in a tree mm -mm. We were trying to figure out what it could possibly be for, catching birds, butterflies, who, why, what. A woman wandered over and said, you ladies picked the wrong day to sit here, and then mumbled something about the smell of a body. <gasps> and she started fussing with the trap, and we asked her what she was up to. It turns out she was a forensic entomologist, <gasps> trapping flies with rotten chicken liver. She said she was going up the entire West Coast, identifying which flies were in each area so that when dead bodies were found, they can gather unique geographical information from the type of flies oh. and maggots found on the bodies. Amazing. Which can air in solving murders. It, which can aid in the solving of murders she said <laughs> you're too early she said that flies can smell rotting flesh from a mile or more away Whoa. i didn't know that and that there was nothing in her trap because the wind was blowing the scent straight out to sea we told her about a dead seal we saw further down the beach and she excitedly took <laughs> off in its direction i love her i found the encounter to be fascinating and thought you might too thank you aria Wow. That's amazing. How cool is that woman? What a job. Yeah. Tonight on CBS. <laughs> I love her. The Coastal Bug Lady. I want <laughs> that's the working title. I'll think of a new one. <laughs> the Coastal Bug Lady. Coastal oh, Bug works. Lady. Uh thanks for writing in, you guys. Keep doing it. Such a good round of stories this week. Yeah, oh, my, my favorite God. murder at Gmail. I and mean, just tell us anything. Yeah, we like hearing from you all your stories. Yeah. Stay sexy. And don't get murdered. A goodbye. Goodbye. Elvis, do you want a cookie? Want a cookie? <laughs>